Okay, so here's a great problem with distributed property, fractions, combining like terms. Oh, this is a multi-step equation dream. All right, so first I see the parentheses, so let's go ahead and distribute the one-eighth into the first parentheses. And because I'm working with fractions, let's go ahead and put that invisible 1 below 5 and 64. And so when we multiply the fractions, we multiply across the top, the numerators, and multiply across the bottom, the denominators. So 1 times 5 is 5, 8 times 1 is 8y. The next fraction, 1 times 64 is 64, and 8 times 1 is 8. Equals, and then I see the other distributive property, so let's distribute 1 fourth and put the invisible ones down below. Again, 1 times 20 is 20, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 times 2 is 2, and 4 times 1 is 4y. All right, now, no more parentheses, I see fractions. When I'm working with fractions, I want to see if I can reduce it first. Most of the time, I can if I look and make sure I pay attention. So, look at these fractions. Can I reduce them to smaller terms? Well, 64 over 8, yes. What about 20 over 4? Yes. And 2 over 4? I may not be able to get rid of the fraction, but yes, I can reduce that fraction. Now, 5 over 8, I can reduce that fraction because there's no common factor of 5 and 8. So, let's go ahead and reduce those fractions that I have. So, I still have 5 eighths y plus 64 divided by 8 is 8. Equals 20 divided by 4 is 5. And then plus 2 over 4 gets reduced to 1 half. All right, so I did my reducing, but I still have fractions. Now, if I still have fractions after I reduce it to its smallest terms, let's get rid of the fraction with the process we called clearing the fraction. So when we clear the fraction, we need to find a common denominator. So I'm going to put invisible 1s below 8 and 5. And the common denominator between 8, 1, 1, and 2 is 8, because 8 is the smallest number that all those numbers can go into evenly. So... In this case, rather than changing 8 over 1, 5 over 1, and 1 over 2 to have fractions with the denominator of 8, let's just multiply everything in my equation by 8. Because if I multiply everything by 8, then I can get rid of my fractions entirely. Here's how I do it. We can cross-reduce 8 goes in 8 one time, leave me with 5y, plus... Now, 8 times 8, uh, there's no cross-reduce we can do there, but 8 times 8 is 64 equals, again, no cross-reducing for 8 times 5, which is 40. But I can cross-reduce 2 into 8. 2 goes into 8 four times, and that will leave me with 4y. So now I don't have any fractions to deal with. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and combine like terms from here, just like we're used to. So 5y and 4y are like terms. They're on different sides, so I need to do the opposite. I always like my variables to the left, to the left. So instead of positive 4y, I'm going to subtract 4y from both sides. And that's going to leave me with 5y minus 4y is 1y plus 64 equals 40. From here, 64 and 40 are like terms, different sides, so I'm going to move my numbers to the right and subtract 64 from both sides, and then that will leave me with 1y on the left, and the math we have to do 40 minus 64, that's kind of weird because the bigger number is on the bottom, so I'm going to rearrange it in orange over here, 64 minus 40, they're different signs, so I need to subtract. 4 minus 0 is 4, and 6 minus 4 is 2. And remember, 64 is the bigger number, so it stays negative. So 1y equals negative 24. But wait a second. 1y, do I need to have the 1 in front? No. So I can just write y equals negative 24. And there we go. There's my answer. So this one had a lot, a lot of extra steps and some extra things we had to know, but it's a good problem, and it came out to be a nice whole answer.